Hi guys, so today I'm going to be doing once again my top 10 best memories. Um, as you know, I deleted all my videos before, so this one, so that video is gone. And I'm doing it again. Now some of them have changed. I have made a new list. I literally just sat down for 15 minutes and made it. So some of them have changed, some of them are different. They will be in a different order. They are not in the order of least favorite to greatest or greatest to least so not in any order like that um just what came into my head or what i wrote down first um so yeah um now my last video i did it and it was over 15 minutes which that's how long my iPod records for 15 minutes until, well, at 15 minute mark, I can upload it to YouTube. It's, if it's any longer than that, I can't. So let's get started because right now I only have 14 minutes to talk about it. So my first hockey game. My first hockey game was a great mo memory. Um, it was a Windsor Spitfires game. Those are the only hockey games I've been to. Uh, Windsor Spitfires game. At the time, this was not their logo. But, yeah, I don't have their logo around my room. But, um... They did this, and it was at the old barn, which is Windsor Arena, and I was just sitting in my seat, just watching the game, and I was, some lady came over to me and my dad and told us that we were the fan of the games, and that we got to move to, we got to move our seats to next to the visitor's bench, so I was so happy about that, and I was like, yes! I was like, wow, my first hockey game, and I'm, like, already, like, the fan of the game, and I was so happy, and I mo we moved seats, and I wasn't, like, it wasn't that exciting because it was the visitor's bench, like, and it was my first hockey game, I didn't know any of the players, I didn't know what was going on, but one thing I knew was that my favorite player on the Windsor Spitfires was Richard Greenop, and I knew you were allowed to fight in hockey, so I said to my dad, I was like, it would be amazing if Greenop started a fight right at the glass, because we're first row, right at the glass. And he's like, yeah, that would be pretty cool. And about five minutes later, we're watching the game, and I see two, like, four pairs of, well, four, two pairs, which is four gloves fall to the ice. And I'm like, what's going on? And I look, and it's Greenop and some guy fighting. And Greenop came over, and he started fighting right in front of me, and oh my god, that was amazing. I was like, are you kidding me? I was like, my wish just came true. I loved it. Okay, so my second memory is my first time going into a haunted house. Now, all my friends know this story. Um, I was about three or four years old, and it was in Niagara Falls. And if you've never been there, it's really fun. You should go there. And it was in Niagara Falls, and I kept saying to my dad, I was like, I want to go to a haunted house. I want to go to a haunted house. So I was like, can we go into nightmares? And he's like, uh, yeah, no. And I was like, oh, okay. He's like, how about we go into the Frankenstein haunted steps? And I'm like, okay. I was like, this isn't even going to be scary. It's Frankenstein. So this lady saw how old I was, and she gave me a flashlight and stuff. And she's like, oh, don't worry. It's not scary. So we're going in, and um, it's completely fine. And then we come to this place, and I'm like, well, let's stop and like let's look. So we look, and right next to me, right here, is a big, clear plastic. It looked like glass, but like clear, like thing, like you can see in it. But there's like nothing there. Like it reflects, and you can see yourself too. And there's a button that says press me. So I'm like, oh. I'm like, this is a haunted house. I was like, I might be three, but I'm smart enough to know when it says press me and it's a haunted house, I'm not pressing it. My dad's like, oh, come on, press it. Nothing's going to happen. And I was like, oh, yeah, he's probably right. So I hit the button. Nothing happened. I turned and bam. Like, not, it didn't hit me, but after the glass, it was a half bloody skeleton. That got me. And I bursted out in tears. And I was like bursting. I bursted out in tears. I was crying. Like, I was screaming and crying, and they stopped the entire haunted house. They turned on all the lights, and some guy came in and was like, are you okay? And, like, he's like, okay. He's like, well, I'm going to tell you. If you turn this way, 
you get out right away. It's the, it's the exit. Or you go that way and finish the rest of the haunted house. My dad's like, oh, come on, let's just finish. Nothing else scary is going to happen. If there's another button, you don't have to press it. I'm like, nope. I was like, I'm done. I'm like, I'm leaving. So we walked out. And there's these two teenage girls there. And they're like, is it scary? And my dad's like, well, look at her. And they're like, oh, yeah, we're not going in. So funny. Okay, so my third memory is when I met Taylor Hall. Um, okay, so this one's not even exciting. Like, I don't know why I was down. Like, I keep thinking it is, but it's not. Um, it was at a skate with the Spitz. And I went up to him and was like, can I get a picture with you? And he's like, sure. So we just stood there. didn't put his arm around me or nothing. We just stood there, took the picture, and it was done. That's when I met Taylor Hall. Number four, when I met Nick Zinder. This one's exciting. So it was a Spitfire second annual carnival. I didn't end up, go end up going to the first one. But it was a Spitfire second annual carnival. And, um, sorry, there's like something in my nose. And, oh, I don't have a lot of time left. And, um, I was like, so they had tables with Spitfires, and there was two on each table, so the lines were so long, I would just go wait in line, and then my dad would run up and tell me who it was, so I was standing there, and I'm just like standing there at the tables, wait, standing there in line waiting, and I finally get up to this one table, and I couldn't, I kept looking, and I was like, oh, I can't see who it is, so I was like, dad, go up and tell me who it is, so he comes back, and he's like, oh, it's number five, Jeff Brathwaite, and um, someone else, and I'm like, who? And he's like, who do you think? I'm like, Zinder. And he's like, yep. And I was like, yes. And I got up to Zinder. I don't remember what I made him sign. I made him sign a lot of stuff. And I was like, oh, can I get a picture with you? He's like, oh, yeah, sure. So I got a picture with him. And he knew me prior to this because of my old sign that said, Zinder, will you marry me? So he knew me prior to that. And then I didn't realize I was wearing my Zinder shirt. So he, and he's like, oh, do you want me to sign your shirt too? And I was like, oh, yeah, sure. So he signed it. And then later on, we were doing, like, the other activities there and stuff. And I come back, and it's like, there's still, like, 20 minutes left before, like, it was done. And there was, like, nobody was, like, there. And Zinder had been sitting at the table for, like, an hour because he had so many fans coming over. And then there was nobody there. And I was like, okay. I was like, well, we got 20 minutes to kill. Zinder's got nothing to do. Let's go talk to him. So, I just went up to him and I was talking to him and stuff. And he offered me a bag of chips and I, did, I said no. I should have taken them, but I said no. And he took the, like, it's like a bag of chips you get on Halloween, like that big, right? Like, those ones are kind of full of chips. And he opened it and just went like this and then crumpled up the bag and it was gone. And I was like, are you kidding me? I'm like, you just ate all those chips. Yeah. My fifth memory is when I met Kirby Rickle. Now, I actually, like, I'm pretty sure I met Kirby before this because my, like, dad used to help coach his old team, the Sun County Panthers. So, but, okay, this is when I met him as a Spitfire. And it was at the Spitfire's Carnival as well, but this was the third annual carnival. Actually, the first time I met him was the second carnival as a Spitfire, but, like, and I wasn't as fan or anything. So, as a fan and as a Spitfire for him. So, I just went up there and I was like, can I get a picture with you? Or no, I had him sign my shirt and sign something else. And then I was like, oh, can I get a picture with you? And he's like, yeah, sure. He's like, come back here. So he put his arm around me and I got the picture with him. But the picture came out so blurry. Like, you couldn't even tell it was us. And I was like, okay. And there were so many kids in line, I couldn't get back in line. I was like, okay, I'll just wait for him. I'll just wait till I see him again. And then my dad's like, and we're still walking. My dad's like, oh, wait. He's like, and he's like, oh, I gotta go ask Kirby something. And I was like, okay. I'm like, well, I'm coming. It's Kirby. And he's like, no, you go wait over there. And I was like, okay. And my dad went to go ask him something. And I was like, oh, and he came back to me. I was like, oh, what'd you ask Kirby? He's like, oh, don't worry about it. And I'm like, no, what, what'd you ask Kirby? He's like, don't worry about it. And I was like, Okay, and then later on that day, I took two more pictures with him, and yeah. My sixth memory is my 13th birthday. Um, so, 
I got money from my mom and mom's boyfriend, and then I went to school, and I walked in the classroom, because it was raining, I'm pretty sure, and I walked in the classroom early, and on my desk was this huge um, piece of paper, and it said, Happy 13th Birthday Proof, and I have it, and I'll show it to you. I'm going to continue talking as I'm showing to you. So that's what it said, Happy 13th Birthday Proof. A bunch of my friends signed it and stuff. And then, um, I got home to my dad's house because it's not only my birthday and my birthday, it's my birthday, my papa's birthday, which is my grandpa, and my, and also my cousin's birthday all on the same day, all on the same side of the family, all on my dad's side. So we celebrate the birthdays together on the same day. So I get to my, so I walk to my dad's house after. And I get there, and my dad woke up because he was sleeping. And my dad woke up, and he's like, he just, I'm sitting on the couch on my iPod, and I was just waiting for him to give me my birthday present because he said he was going to get it. And, um, sorry, I'm getting Instagram notifications at the top of my screen. And, um, he handed it to me, and he handed it to me, like, face down, so it was, like, black, and I was like, okay, I'm like, what is this? He's like, flip it over, sorry, because I could feel, like, glass, so I flipped it over, I was like, maybe it's, like, a picture or something? And I look, and it says, 16, Kirby Reichel, forward, and it's a picture of Kirby Reichel. And I couldn't see because of the way the lighting was, so I tilted it like this, and it says, happy 13th birthday, Prue, in an autograph, and I was like... I've seen the picture before. It does not say happy 13th birthday Prue on it, and there was no autograph on it before. I was like, I was like, and that's not my dad's writing. I'm like, who wrote this? And my dad's like, Kirby did. And I was like, are you serious? And my dad's like, that's what I was talking to him about at the carnival. And I was like, oh. And then we went out for dinner, and then, yeah. So, number seven, when I got my dog, I've been wanting a dog forever, and I finally got one. So, yeah. Um, when I went to the carnival with my friend Destiny, um, we had, like, an amazing time. It was so much fun. We skipped school and all that, and it was so much fun. I loved it. And I'm running out of time, so that's why I'm talking, so, like, faster. Um, when I, got, when I went up to Bruce Mines, is my number ninth, and, um, went to Bruce Mines, and, like, I love, I love car rides, and it was a 13-hour car ride. And I, I didn't, I slept like an hour. And it was so much fun. And like, went from like Sarnia to Barry to like all these different places. I don't even remember. Oh, Kitchener, um, Bruce Mines, through St. Marie, Thessalon, so many places. Then my 10th memory, which I'll probably spend the rest of the time talking about, is the last Spitfires game of the 2012-2013 season. So, the last game of the season, I don't my calendar switched. So, um, I don't remember what the date was. Oh, March 17th. I have my other calendar. And so we're at the game and they were losing and there was 15 minutes left in the third period. I was like, they might come back, but I don't think they will. Oh, no, they couldn't come back. I think they were losing big time, so they couldn't come back. And I was like, well, maybe we'll get a goal. Maybe I can cheer. So, I was sitting there, and in the row, it was, we had four seats, so it was my papa, my grammy, my dad, and me, and then other people. So, some lady walks over to my grammy, and she's like, are you Margaret, I'm not going to say her last name, and she's like, yes, I am, and she's like, here you go, and she's like, what's this, and we read it, she got to go on the ice and win a game on Jersey, so we go down there, we pick, she brings me, we pick Patrick Samvito. The guy who got Kirby Reckles, he's two people away from me. I'm like, oh, hey, you got Kirby. He's like, yeah, he was really mad about it. And Kirby walked over to him. I was like, Kirby. And Kirby looked at me. I only have a couple seconds left. And Kirby looked at me and waved to me and then smiled at me and came over and asked me if I wanted a picture. Oh, my God, I almost died. I was like, yes. And that was the last before a game. We took a picture and left. So those are my top ten memories. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. And, yeah. Subscribe, comment down below, like, and yeah, stay tuned for more videos. Bye, guys.